Hello everyone, this is Richard from Modern Healthspan. Today we'll go through a paper from the Lamming Lab, which is a review of the impact of branched chain amino acid, or BCAA restriction, on health and longevity in rodents and humans. It seems that restricting BCAAs it has a positive impact on insulin resistance, body composition, and other markers of metabolic health. Although what the implication is for maintaining muscle mass as we age is not clear. First, a disclaimer that in this video, we are sharing a paper that we found interesting. It is not a recommendation or medical advice. Here is the paper. Protein restriction and branch chain amino acid restriction promote geroprotective shifts in metabolism. Age-related diseases are increasing, and low-protein diets have been associated with reduced mortality in humans and promote metabolic health and extended lifespan in mice. Many of the benefits of restricting protein are because of the lower consumption of the three branch-chain amino acids, leucine, isoleucine, and valine. This review looked at the impact of the BCAAs on metabolism and longevity in rodents and in humans and the underlying mechanisms. And they conclude that the makeup of the protein may be a driver of metabolic issues and just reducing the BCAAs may be a promising approach. A little background on amino acids and proteins. Amino acids are the components of proteins. They are linked together in short chains to form peptides. The peptide subunits are then joined together and folded into proteins. There are 20 amino acids which can be coded in the human genome. Three of these are known as the branch chain amino acids because of their chemical structure. These are leucine, isoleucine, and valine. They are abundant in high-protein foods, making up approximately 20% of the amino acids in meat, fish, eggs, and nuts. Nine of the amino acids are essential, which is to say that they must be obtained from diet and cannot be manufactured internally. The three BCAAs are all essential. The BCAAs are promoters of mTOR. And particularly leucine is one of the components sensed by mTOR to decide whether it should be in growth mode or not. Because of their ability to activate mTOR and so promote growth, BCAAs are also used as supplements for building muscle. Let's have a look at some of the key points in the review. First of these concerns insulin resistance. It has been shown that BCA levels in the blood increase with insulin resistance and obesity and high levels can be used as a marker for the onset of diabetes. They looked at a couple of studies of supplementations of BCAAs, which showed an increase in glucose intolerance and insulin resistance, and also promoted overeating, obesity, and early mortality. In the opposite direction, there are studies which restricted BCAAs. Some studies used total elimination, but as the BCAAs are essential in mice as well as humans, this is not sustainable over a long period. Others used a restriction of between 50 and 80%, which can be continued for the life of the animal. A 67% restriction on nine-week-old mice improved metabolic health and shows many of the benefits of protein restriction. The mice weighed less because of reduced fat, although their overall caloric intake increased. This was primarily because of increased metabolic output. And looking at fitness and longevity in rodents, restricting BCAAs from birth by 67% extended the lifespan of males, but not females, by 30%. The males showed reduced mTORC1 signaling, although they thought that this was not the only reason for the life extension. And finally, what do we see in restricting BCAAs in humans? Short-term supplementation has been studied as a way for athletes or the elderly to build or maintain muscle, where it has been shown to promote muscle growth and decrease muscle damage after exercise. So it will be interesting to see if there is a right time of the day for eating BCAAs for people who don't exercise. However, elevated BCAAs are generally associated with poor health outcomes in humans and a higher blood levels of isoleucine with increased mortality and higher intake of isoleucine with a higher BMI. Again, in the elderly, especially the frail, BCAAs are low. An increased protein in the elderly improves frailty, blood glucose control, and lean mass. 
So in summary, restricting BCAA in the diet of mice showed improved body composition, improved glucose control, higher energy expenditure, reduced frailty, increased lifespan in males, and decreased mTOR activation, all of which seems very positive. Though it seems it would be quite tricky to implement a diet which just restricted these amino acids rather than proteins in general for humans. And as we saw, for those trying to build or maintain muscle, BCAA supplementation is helpful. For those of us aiming to maintain muscle mass as we age, how to balance these opposing views is going to require further investigation. Mm -hmm.